Will an economic Pearl Harbor destroy America? Unfortunately, I believe the answer is yes. Why? Because America has set itself up for a Pearl Harbor-like attack, and that attack is underway right now. Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is this economic Pearl Harbor attack that's underway right now. And that's not my opinion. It's based on facts. And we're going to go over those facts today. So you're going to want to watch this video all the way to the end so that you make sure you don't miss out and fail to understand what's happening right now and what's going to happen over the coming months, maybe a couple of years. I don't know how long this is going to take, but this attack is underway and it will destroy America as the leader of global commerce and as the world's most powerful military. So let's dive right in. I'm going to read this. This is the November 2022 End Times Bible Prophecy Newsletter. Again, this is a free newsletter you can sign up for that I put out. This is titled, Will an Economic Pearl Harbor Destroy America? On December 7th, 1941, Japan caught America by surprise when it attacked the U.S. naval base in Pearl Harbor in Honolulu, Hawaii. Japan sought to destroy the U.S. Pacific Fleet. Unfortunately, or fortunately, that attack did not destroy the United States of America. But the future may not be so kind. Why? Because the U.S. is setting itself up for a modern-day Pearl Harbor, one from which it will never recover. And it won't be the result of a military strike. It will be the result of an economic one. To understand what's coming, because this attack is already underway, we need to understand history. Because this battle, this war, is being fought in the economic realm. The Bretton Woods System. In 1944, the Bretton Woods Agreement established the financial rules and monetary system governing Western nations. The system required participating nations to guarantee convertibility of their currencies into U.S. dollars at a fixed rate, with the dollar convertible to gold by foreign governments. This essentially put the world on a type of gold standard via the U.S. dollar. So, following World War II, the United States was the manufacturing powerhouse of the world. Most of Europe and Japan lay in ruins. All of the gold had made its way to the United States because they were the ones arming the world and supplying the world, supplying the Russians, supplying, you know, the British, everything. And so the gold came back. So to set up this new monetary system, everything was linked to the dollar and the dollar was linked to gold. But then that changed. It says the system served the world well until the late 1960s when it became clear the United States was printing dollars without the gold needed to back up those dollars. Out-of-control government spending via a host of new government social programs, thank the Great Society and all that came with that, and the war in Vietnam threatened to deplete U.S. gold stockpiles. So on August 15, 1971, President Nixon temporarily, and I put that in quotation marks, closed the gold window. I say temporarily because it's never been opened, but he claimed it would be temporary. 51 years plus later, that temporary is, is permanent. Terminating the convertibility of dollars into gold, this made the dollar a fiat currency, meaning it wasn't backed by anything of value, couldn't be converted to anything of value. To prevent runaway inflation, the United States brokered a deal with Saudi Arabia, which effectively set up a new world monetary system. That brought us to the petrodollar system. Following the 1973 Yom Kippur War, the United States found itself the target of an OPEC oil embargo as a result of the military aid it provided Israel. Oil prices quadrupled, with the dollar no longer tied to gold. Inflation soared as the U.S. continued to run annual budget deficits. Facing these headwinds, in 1974, the U.S. brokered a deal with Saudi Arabia to stabilize the dollar. The United States agreed to buy oil from Saudi Arabia and other OPEC nations and defend the kingdom militarily while also providing military aid and equipment. In return, Saudi Arabia and the rest of OPEC agreed to sell oil only in U.S. dollars 
and use those dollars to buy U.S. debt, that means U.S. treasuries and government bonds, effectively supporting both the dollar and U.S. government spending. So when, if people wanted oil at that time and ever since, they've had to have dollars in order to buy it. That increases substantially the global demand for dollars. For nearly five decades, the U.S.-Saudi relationship held up well. The United States successfully defended Saudi Arabia in Operation Desert Shield in 1990-91, and Saudi Arabia continued to sell oil in dollars. But in recent years, the U.S.-Saudi relationship has started to fray, and over the past 18 months in particular, it's all but fallen apart. That means the days are numbered for what remains of the petrodollar system. And as we're going to find out, that means a new system is coming to replace it. So a critical turning point, August 2021. What happened in August 2021? Well, exactly 50 years to the day from when Nixon closed the gold window, the Taliban entered Kabul and the Afghan president fled the country. In hindsight, this, was, this event struck a fatal blow to the petrodollar system. The petrodollar is still alive, but it won't last much longer. Why? The U.S. abandoned its allies. It left Americans behind enemy lines and allowed those who assisted America to fall into the torturous hands of the Taliban. In the face of such a betrayal, is it any surprise Saudi Arabia might begin to question U.S. commitment to Saudi Arabia's security. The U.S. showed itself to be an unreliable partner. Russia was quick to capitalize. Unnoticed by many in the Western media, Russia brokered its own security deal with Saudi Arabia, undermining the petrodollar and threatening its future. Now remember, the petrodollar is based upon United States guaranteeing the security of Saudi Arabia, and that's why they're agreeing to sell their oil in dollars. Following the pullout of Afghanistan and just abandoning all of our allies, Saudi Arabia saw that and thought, what if they do that to us? And so as we see in this article right here, Russia and Saudi Arabia signed military pact amid Biden chaos in Afghanistan. This is from August 2021. Very critical turning point in the history of the world and in regard to the petrodollar and this effectively monetary system that we've been working off of for the last 50 years. That completely shifted at that time and we, we don't really hear the media talking about that. Then we had the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Fast forward to February 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine. In response, the U.S. and its allies imposed sanctions on Russia, froze Russian assets, and kicked Russian banks out of the international financial messaging system, SWIFT. This served as a... As a <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is still giving out. This served as a major wake-up call to the nations of the world. Just as America's abandonment of Afghanistan made every nation question America's commitment to its allies, U.S. sanctions against Russia made the nations of the world realize what would happen if they ended up on America's bad list. They now understand the risk of holding too many U.S. treasuries or of being too reliant on an international financial system dominated by the U.S. dollar. The result? These nations are now willing to explore if not actively seek an alternative to the dollar. So bear with me. All of this is going to come together at the end. Now we learn about BRICS, the BRICS nations. What is that? In 2006, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, the BRIC nations, held the first BRIC summit. The goal was to increase cooperation and explore opportunities for economic growth between these growing nations. In 2010, South Africa joined, and the coalition took on the moniker BRICS. Since then, BRICS has worked to create an alternative to the SWIFT payment system, as well as a commodity-backed currency to challenge the U.S. dollar. 
As 2022 draws to a close, a host of additional nations have expressed interest in joining the BRICS coalition. Among them are some of the most important producers of oil and natural gas, Nigeria, Iran, Argentina, Kazakhstan, Indonesia, the latest nation to express interest, Saudi Arabia. And again, I would turn to this article right here from Breitbart. Saudi Arabia seeks to join Russia-China-led BRICS coalition after Biden administration insults. This is just from mid-October, so not that long ago. Now keep in mind, remember when uh, Joe Biden wanted Saudi Arabia to pump more oil? You remember he caught, first he called Mohammed bin Salman, and they didn't even take the call in Saudi Arabia. That should have been a clue to the shift that took place in August 2021. To my knowledge, that had never happened to a U.S. president calling Saudi Arabia and they won't answer his call. So a significant shift happened in August 2021. Since then, there was maybe a couple of months ago, Biden went and met with Mohammed bin Salman and asked for more oil production OPEC to increase its oil production and was turned down. So again, something significant has changed in that relationship. What does that mean? That leads us to the coming destruction of the U.S. dollar. If BRICS creates its own commodity-backed currency as an alternative to the U.S. dollar and all the nations expressing interest join BRICS, it will destroy the dollar. Those nations represent over 50% of the world's population and an even larger share of the world's commodity production. If oil starts trading in other currencies, if the dollar loses its reserve currency status, if international trade is conducted in fewer and fewer dollars, meaning demand for dollars drops while supply remains the same, then a flood of dollars will return to the United States. This will cause massive inflation a collapse in confidence in the U.S. dollar, and major destruction throughout the American economy. Interest rates will skyrocket, and the four pillars of American household wealth, stocks, bonds, dollars, and real estate, will collapse in real terms. The United States will no longer be the world's financial center, and its power will erode significantly. So guys, this is a big deal this petrodollar standard has made most of the world for the last five decades demand dollars and conduct world trade in dollars. If they stop doing that, all those dollars will make their way back to the United States. The supply of those dollars will increase significantly, and that means the purchasing power of each of those dollars will go down, and we will have massive inflation, and again, Interest rates are directly correlated with all these pillars of American wealth we discussed. If interest rates go up, bond prices go down. If interest rates go up, generally, stock prices go down. If interest rates go up, then payments on homes you're buying go up. So the price has to go down for it to be affordable for most people because most people aren't paying cash for a home. They're getting a mortgage for it. So... You would have a collapse in the dollar, real estate, stocks, and bonds, all simultaneously. And where does this you, the, the power of the United States come from? It comes from its economic might and its military. And how do we afford that military? Well, we afford that military because we can print dollars to buy oil. Now every country in the world would be able to do that if they can trade in their own currencies, for instance, some countries, some of these countries, like take Saudi Arabia, for, for instance, if they sell their oil for dollars and then those dollars lose their purchasing power over time, that's not a good deal for them. But if they sell that oil in rupees or yen or yuan or rubles or whatever else, euros, they can then turn around and convert those to gold or they could use this new BRICS currency and have something that retains its purchasing power that doesn't erode over time. And so you're, gonna, you're seeing more and more countries buy into this. Notice that 
The United States tried to isolate Russia following the invasion of Ukraine, but it has not worked out that way, has it? We've seen China standing firmly on Russia's side. So has India, which the United States had thought was its ally in this. And it turns out that's not the case. We're seeing Saudi Arabia that the United States thought was its ally turning away. So we're seeing most of the nations of the world outside of Europe and Japan, Australia, Canada, they're turning away from the United States and towards the BRICS nations as the center of power. And so it's only a matter of time for, you know, you've got one currency that's a fiat currency, it's backed by nothing, and one that is a commodity-backed currency. Now, they haven't rolled this out yet, but they're talking about it and on the verge of it. As soon as that happens, I believe the U.S. dollar will very quickly collapse in purchasing power at that point. And then what happens? Well, then what happens? We see... CBDCs, so central bank digital currencies. Once the petrodollar ends and the dollar experiences massive inflation or even hyperinflation, a new monetary system will have to take its place. Is there a, a phrase we might give that? We might call that a great reset, right? We've heard a lot of talk about that. This would definitely bring one. It would change completely how the world operates from how it's operated in the past. Will it be the new BRICS currency or something else? We don't know for sure, but in all likelihood, it will be built on blockchain. Many believe if BRICS creates a new commodity-backed currency, that currency won't be instantly convertible into underlying commodities. Instead, those commodities will be pledged and anchored to the new currency via blockchain technology. Meanwhile, central banks and the Western financial world, and really all over the globe, openly discuss their plans to replace today's national currencies with central bank digital currencies. Either way, a great reset is coming to the global financial system, and digital currencies will take over. When they do, government will wield unprecedented power. With such power, not only will government be able to track everything you buy or sell, and where have we heard that, it will be able to kick you out of the economic system, just as the Bible says. It's coming to the world when government-sponsored cryptocurrencies replace paper currencies, individual freedom and liberty will disappear. Governments will be able to turn off your cryptocurrency or reprogram it to determine how you could use it. For instance, if your social credit score isn't high enough, they can reprogram the currency in your account to only work within a few miles of your home or limit it to purchase a few specific pre-approved items, right? Items that they determine you should, you should be able to have. Ultimately, if you do something the government doesn't approve of, they'll be able to shut down your ability to buy and sell altogether. The Canadian government already showed its willingness to do this when it cut off financial access to anyone who supported the Canadian trucker protest. The Bible says this is precisely what will happen in the end times. The Antichrist will establish a global system of commerce. His system will play a part in every economic transaction on earth. It will be so dominant, no one will be able to buy or sell anything without the Antichrist approval. Does this sound like something far off in the future? It's not. Fast approaching, we see the foundations of the Antichrist economic system coming into place today. The US dollar will soon lose its status as the world's reserve currency, and the world will be one step closer to the mark of the beast system. Now, is the dollar going to fall apart and go away tomorrow? No. But is this inevitable? I believe at this point it is. These nations through their alignments, have made it clear where they stand, and they're going to move away from U.S. financial power and the dollar and towards something else. And once that happens, the United States' power, at their economic power and their military power, which is a derivative of that financial power, will go away. Now, if that happens... 
And again, I believe that it's inevitable. That answers a question that a lot of people have had, which is, where is America found in Bible prophecy? Well, the short answer is it's not. You know, there are some people that can point to certain passages, and they really have to stretch to attribute those to the United States, but very clearly in regard to the end times and the world geopolitical power structure in the end times, the United States is not a big player. They're going, you know, they'll still exist in some form. You know, the North America isn't going away, but the power emanating from the United States will not be present in the end times. And so this makes it very clear one of the reasons why that may happen. Now, is it the only reason that may not happen? I happen to believe the rapture will be the final end to any bit of American power. But this could happen. We could see the U.S. dollar collapse before the rapture. We don't know. We'll just have to see how it all plays out. But the end of American power and this, this global structure that we've seen where the United States rules over the world economically and militarily is going to come to an end, and I believe it's coming to an end here in the months and years ahead as we see this BRICS coalition come together and as we see them push a com competing currency against the U.S. dollar that's going to be more in demand and stronger than the U.S. dollar. And it will expose the Achilles heel of America, which is our fiat currency and the financialization of our entire economy, which has led to the offshoring of our manufacturing capability, the offshoring of a lot of our mining, a lot of, a lot of our fossil fuel production and exploration. We've outsourced all of that and financialized everything. And when that financial system collapses, we're not going to be, the United States won't be a major power anymore. So what do you think about all this, guys? Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. But again, I think all of this is a sign of the times in which we live. We live in the season of the Lord's return. And if that's the case, which the Bible says it is, we see all those signs Jesus and the prophets said to look for. If that's the case, then we would expect American power to wane on the international global scene, and we're on the on the verge of seeing that. We are seeing that, and as evidenced by Saudi Arabia's actions, not even taking the president's phone calls. So we're seeing that power wane. It will effectively all but go away when the end times arrives, and so we would expect to see these sort of things happening. It's just one more indication of the times in which we live. And what does that mean? Guys, it means good news. It means Jesus is coming back. So make sure to like and share this. God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to sign up for my free monthly newsletter and get your copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Just follow the link in the description to get your free book. Also, Make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.